put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. The Huntsman Winter's War. Long before the Snow White story, Ravenna was queen of a kingdom, and we get some nice gratuitous, you know, sexualized Ravenna right off the bat. With yeah, I'm I'm not gonna give it away exactly. It's they're, they're just playing chess, but it's surprisingly erotic. There, there are like so many jokes. There's like, there's a Twilight joke there. There's, there's a reference to like... The James Bond parody, Mike Myers. Anyway... Yes, she was the queen, she took over the kingdom, and there's some nice, really obvious commenting on, like, the, the, the different classes in the, yes, and she had her sister Freya live with her in the the kingdom. You remember Freya? Freya, she was always sister of Ravenna. Who's Finn? What are you talking about? And one day, Freya Freya has a child, and. Let's just say that that it doesn't go well. The the child the child dies. I you know the the right right off the bat it it kind of tries to top the first. It's it's very much a sequel. It tries to top the first one in everything. So yeah, right off the bat, you know how how can we you know top a you know, a girl losing her mother at age seven. How about a mother losing her infant? Yes, that's that's a good way to to set things off. So, infanticide. You know, I'm not going to give away exactly the the circumstances of it, but it's yeah. With with that, the 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 powers that Freya had manifest, and she you know she becomes a snow, ice queen, ice queen, and. Yeah, the the you know the the kingdom isn't big enough for both of them. You know, it it doesn't really say if they're like upset with each other, but you know, with with two incredibly powerful women that both kind of like to rule things. Yeah, Freya goes off, and you know she spends years in her wintry castle raising an army of huntsmen because they had to do something to keep Eric relevant I, I realize it's not said that much in the first one but yeah the, the huntsman you know Chris Hemsworth's character is named Eric and he was in the first one as well and she yeah, 
she dramatically increases her 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 reach and freezes more and more as she takes over more land and since it was not destroyed in the first one for reasons Eric and a, f a few others are sent out to retrieve the magic mirror and the I suppose yeah and and it basically the mirror started like it was it was like still talking to people after the the after the the ending of the first movie and it seemed to you know the we're, we're told by William who's in this for very very little time that Snow White is ill and it's it's not entirely it it appears to be related to the mirror but she may have just gone for some fruit but yeah you 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 see Snow White almost like I don't know two seconds or so with her back turned and we're told that she's ill and that's it and yeah and the they they attempted to move the mirror and then something went wrong and now Eric is being sent out to deal with that and maybe he'll just encounter some creatures and you know they'll be a, a creature very similar to with with a head at the very least very similar to the the troll in the first one because it was you know it was something that was in the first one so they should probably do something similar to it in the sequel and the 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 hints of of possible incest are much vaguer in this and there really isn't any rapey kind of yeah so you know nevertheless the the it's it's almost as crass as the first one still so and I guess you know we, we can now completely forget any hint that you know maybe the the you know in the first one with maybe the magic of the mirror was just in Ravenna said no, no no it's it's straight up it's magic even without yeah and maybe some way Ravenna will be brought back via the mirror because if she doesn't there's really only one major character who returns and like the first there are, there are scenes that are just of you know the the queen in audience with someone or like strategizing or the like although m much less in in this one doing last minute notes the climax is okay but it's very very small and limited yes even compared to the very climax of the first one the action is great throughout I've already already slightly gotten into the retcons there is no mention of Finn nor is there any hint 
it's just nothing is done to attempt to explain why in the first one there was a single brother and now there's a single sister and in neither or we saw Ravenna as a kid in the first one and Finn was right there and in this there's no mention of Finn. The, the movie starts before the story of Snow White so Finn should be there but he isn't and he isn't even mentioned and they kind of the characterization of Ravenna really changes some some things that yeah I, I don't know and and definitely either try to forget what you have seen in the trailers or don't watch the trailers because they straight up just give away stuff they they make things that should not be like yeah it it basically gives away things there there are things that you may be kind of think could that be you know as you're watching it and you're not quite supposed to really be certain that that's what happened but the trailers pretty much give it away with Freya's basically you know mastery of, of you know she can very quickly freeze things and like there's there's an early bit where you know, there's there's a guy bringing her something, and you know the place is dark. It's a it's a big castle, so he's got a he's he's got a torch, and she, you know as he's he's approaching her, she's you know sitting there chilling on the throne. I'm pretty sure, and she's like, N no no light, no fire, something like that, and you know he you know, he basically ignores her. He go, keeps going, and then. You know, she again says, I said no light. And just as she says that, she chills. She doesn't just put out the fire. She chills the torch. So he's standing there and it's like frozen to his. And, and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, she's she basically, she does, she does ice stuff. You know, she, she likes to raise a wall of ice make the enemy pay for it in the first film the the stuff with the dwarves is more more complex and more interesting in this it's very straightforward they're they're like very much just like they're comedy sidekicks or they're very predictable kind of character types and such but I will admit I did I did enjoy them in this the yeah I, I found it enjoyable to the, the yeah it was fun they 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 have some fun with them without yeah I've already kind of touched upon this in this basically the mirror will whisper at you and it will like try to get you to kill for it or the, the like it's yeah which I mean I I don't know I guess we never did see it in in a situation where it could have, you know, in the first one, it's always Ravenna using it. So we don't know if it would be whispering stuff like that. But yeah, again, it feels like a complete mischaracterization. Among the, I already mentioned, you know, in the first one we meet a troll, and in this we meet goblins, and yeah, basically they're they're incredibly greedy, so they stole the golden mirror, and 
yeah, it's going to be, you know, they're, they're going to have to get them away from, they're, they're going to have to get the mirror away from them. And the, 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 there's quite a bit more like straight up comedy in this. And I'd say about a third of it is just bad and just does not work. It's especially some of the early material. It just I, they should have they should have had some alternate takes, alternate lines for some of these earlier, you know, some of the first scenes where they try off this comedic material, and then the, you know, the editor should have just gone with the alternate ones because the early ones, the the early material just does not work, and it's not you can you can see what they're going for, and they get it to work later on in the film. But, yeah, the, you know, early on you're going to feel like it's going to be a really long movie with a lot of bad comedic writing, and it gets a lot better. The, the film does, indeed, bring in elements from a bunch of, you know, very familiar fantasy films you know the very very early on as they are trying to find the mirror you know they they go into a tavern and it might as well be the prancing pony from you know the fellowship of the ring it's just yeah and they have you know they have material about how you know female dwarves are very unattractive and so so yeah it's right out of and eric does some like tracking kind of stuff and it's it's real aragorn at the start of two towers and some some Legolas as well it's yeah and he is supposedly the best tracker that Snow White's kingdom has William refers to him as that and says that's why he's the one who needs to go out and get the mirror back And it is revealed that very early on, Freya finds out that the mirror is out there. So, Eric will have to get it before she has a chance to, yeah. And the... The thing about her raising an army, she genuinely, she, like, goes to, <laughs> yeah, she, she ravages these enemy lands, takes all of the children, and raises them as her, her army. So, yeah. And the movie is an hour and 45 minutes, not counting the end credits. The ending really awkwardly sequel banks. And the... Parts of the film are narrated. And I'm almost certain it's by Liam Neeson. And it's... it's yeah, I don't know. I just I did not expect that. He's he doesn't narrate any of the trailers. And it wasn't yeah. I'm not sure it's even on IMDb yet. His name connected to it, but I'm almost certain that's his voice.
Now, Freya has this fancy silver domino mask, which allows her to see through these white birds. I don't know, I guess they're kind of like owls. Similar to how Ravenna has a raven motif, and this is how Freya knows that the mirror, you know, where the mirror is. She knew of the mirror before the events of the first film, and then, you know, she's she realizes, excuse me, that her sister has been killed. And you know, in in what we see of Ravenna, which I should note is not an awful lot. You 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 actually see most of the stuff in the trailers, but she's you know she's no longer particularly insecure, which again as as a really big part of her characterization on the first, but she does still have some sadism to her and maybe not not much of it, but maybe there'll be some battle by, via magic between the two sisters, making it the age-old battle of silvery ice versus tar black and sometimes golden glass. And I'm sure next will be twigs versus hair. I'm sure there are other frail, easy-to-break substances that appear more or less organically. Or, of course, it could be that they can be extremely strong. They are rather memorable and compelling to look at, and that they speak to the characters, which, yeah, that would be, that that's what I would put my money on. And perhaps by now, Ravenna has mastered the Venom symbiote, which she did partially unleash in at the end of the first one in glass form. The she doesn't really use much magic other than that and the you know this does some good stuff with the sibling relationship with you know Freya is very much the the little sister so she is the one who you know she really wasn't expected to rule expected to do that well by Ravenna and you know it's Finn of course never did rule any land because he's male and yeah, Ravenna is not the biggest fan of of men, and you know, in this, the the stakes are, of course, you know, much much greater. It's not just Snow White's kingdom. It's yeah, like Freya does a tremendous amount of conquering early in this. And as Brad Jones, the Sin of Snob, and his friends point out, it's more or less the first movie again. They, they could tell that from just the trailers. And yes, definitely watch the 1997 version of Snow White with Sigourney Weaver. It, you know, I think it's called like A Tale of Terror. It's slightly distracting the way that some of the dwarves are actually played by dwarves. Some of or little little people. I don't know what the politically correct term is. And some of them are, you know, yeah. 
non little yeah but it's it's yeah and and do also note it's i don't think a tale of terror and snow white and the huntsman have that much they're not rivals in the, they are both versions of the snow white story but where snow white and the huntsman is very much a modern take something that you know yeah a a as up, updating the story to fit what we expect and what how we view things where a tale of terror is basically the the classic story just with all the the darkness that you would expect the the original to contain you know very very much not the disney version and yeah about half of the you know really major cast is back and the film you know is essentially enough of a sequel it doesn't feel like just you know it it does the the bigger thing and yeah you know it it sets itself apart from the first one and the and and at the same time it doesn't go so far off that it ends up becoming completely you know you can very much tell that it is a sequel and it is you know the the retconning does make it kind of it it insists on being a sequel it's you know i mean you can you can watch this not having watched the first one but it is constantly referencing you know it's it's yeah it th this is not like just another story featuring some of these same characters this is a sequel you know this is i mean it starts with some backstory but it doesn't really do the midquel thing it it's very early on says okay and this is where the you know yeah there there's an early bit where it just you know where where something specific happens and then 7 years pass and then once the, with the 7 years having passed the you know the events of the first film have happened and we and and we now know some of, about Freya and her situation and yeah other than that it's so so it and yeah i've already gone into how snow white herself and the mirror yeah it's it's very much this is what happened after the the first one now this is directed by a visual effects guy but it was directed by the visual effects guy who was the visual effects guy for the first film so he did work very closely on the first one and to be fair the director of the first one that was his first feature the director fares decently here it it does kind of try to have like a, a heart and a moral to it like the first one but it ends up being a bit too on the nose the with the the first one does as i've already somewhat mentioned feel like every major recent you know fantasy film that that 
came before it. And with, you know, between the first one and this one, you know, the, the Hobbit trilogy is, you know, was completed. So, you know, the, there was plenty of material to go for there, although they do appear to have more stayed with just Lord of the Rings itself. Maybe they were among the the ones not as impressed by the the Hobbit trilogy. None of the writers are back from the first one. The one of the new writers is mostly known for children's films. I don't think that is too much like this it didn't really feel too much like a children's film although certainly more conventional and less risk-taking but con considering that it you know if I went into it and I didn't know he had written children's films I wouldn't necessarily have like assumed that about him also his surname is Spiliotopoulos the other writer has written Scary Movies 3 and 4, Hangovers 2 and 3, and Superhero Movie, which he also directed. I suspect that's where some of the worst of the writing... Re really, given that, I mean, when, when I saw that that was what we had as far as directing and you know, director and writing crew, I expected far, far worse than than what I got. And the the this I have not watched Frozen. But this and that both adapt the same Hans Christian Andersen tale, you know, more or less loosely from what I can tell. But yeah, the snow, ice queen, no, the snow queen. And I, I'm not sure this one takes that much from it. But there there are some things. And certainly you know, the the Freya herself certainly has some. The the plot is not really overly complicated the way it arguably is in the first one. It's it's fairly straightforward. The you know Eric is sent out to get back the mirror, Freya finds out, and yeah, I, I'm not going to go too much more into that, but, excuse me, it's, 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 it's pretty straightforward. There, there are still a few, like, Just a few wonky motivations and not quite, you know, unanswered questions and such. But yeah, l like the first one, largely it, you know, more or less holds up the the script and motivations and such. The reason I cared about the first one was pretty much Kristen Stewart. I have not watched the Twilight films. I don't blame her, but rather the directors, for her performance in those. And I forgive her for choosing that role. I knew she would be good as Snow White. It, you know, quiet and not the, you know, but... Yeah, quiet but not weak, and certainly, you know, yeah, not like, not, 
not not like too scared to to go out and do yeah she she at first isn't like incredibly physically capable herself but she's she's not afraid to take risks and yeah i thought she did really well in what as far as i can tell is pretty much her first action role and there's serious character growth you feel she really earns the throne <laughs> Yeah, I've already mentioned that we barely see Snow White in this, and yeah, Kristen Stewart herself does not appear at all in this. And even when she was still attached, the idea of a sequel to a fairy tale was already a little bit of a silly idea, but you know, today it's, it's remakes, sequels, it's all properties that have already done well so yeah and I'm not gonna get too much into why Christian Stewart is not in this one what I am gonna say is we're all human everybody makes mistakes I am sorry that romantic relationships were harmed by those mistakes and if you slut shame, slut shame, you're a reprehensible excuse for a human being. The I can I can understand why, although they say that's not why, of course. Because of the ins that if if let's just say that if the incident is why Kristen is not in this one, but doesn't it attract more attention to you know, clearly bring back the thing, but just without her in it. I mean, her character name is 40% of the title. With the and gone, we only have 40% left. And the new words aren't that different from Snow White. Again, the, the, the Hans Christian Andersen story is called The Snow Queen, not The Ice Queen. So, yeah, it the, the movie could almost have been called Snow Wars or yeah I, I just feel like it would have made more sense if they did something completely different but just with the you know with the same people if they were like interested in working more with you know within the overall like realm of fantasy and with the same you know with the same company or whatever but yeah and Eric is of course our protagonist now because really who else would be yes I 100% realize that they could very well have made Sarah the protagonist that's part of my point now, apparently some people, when watching the first one, thought that the character of Eric was, you know, that, that Chris Hemsworth was playing him, you know, the same as he plays Thor. And I don't know, I guess some people just have eyes but do not see. And the, you know, having just rewatched the first one, Eric is actually a little condescending towards, it's, it's certainly towards Snow White. And, you know, she does, again, she doesn't start out as the most capable, and he does come around her, but that's, you know, part of the, but, but nevertheless, at first, he even, even when he talks to the Queen, when he talks to Ravenna, he's kind of, yeah, he, he has a, he has an attitude when it comes to women, which just, when you, when you look at this film, 
they really didn't think the whole sequel thing quite through. Because the more you actually look at the characters who are, you know, in both of them, basically, you know, Ravenna and Eric, the, the, both their characterization, especially Ravenna's, and just the, yeah, if, if you, the things that Eric says in the first one regarding his past in no way line up with what this film presents. And, and I mean, they didn't, it didn't need to be Sarah that they made a character, you know, she could, Sarah could have remained a just, you know, part of his backstory. It could have been a completely new character, but no. According to this, his wife Sarah was a warrior. In fact, in some ways more capable than himself, and certainly a match for him. And... Uh, so, yeah, when, when he in the first one says, oh, you know, I came home, the stench of battle was on me, I, I guess she took a bath before he got around to, uh, yeah, and, you know, oh, I, I wasn't worth saving, but she still saved me, you know, just, yeah, just, and, you know, of course, now that his beloved is corporeal, so, you know, we can of course have, you know, yeah, basically, essentially a sex scene. The, not, not a spoiler, this is part of the, you know, this happens very early in the film, it's part of the backstory. Which, again, you know, in the, in the first one, just, you know, some, some kisses and that was it. And then here in the sequel, full on, like, yeah, obviously not like, it's not an R-rated film. But you can, you can, you know, fill in the blanks, nevertheless. And... <sighs> You know, it. I was a little surprised that in this, at no point does he tell Sarah, I met this girl called Snow White. She reminded me a lot, you know, she reminded me a lot of you. I kissed her, that brought her back to life, you know. She has the same Scottish accent as he does, by the way. That, that might catch you off guard at first, but... Yeah, <laughs> the again, I I have no idea how Sarah as you know in this how she was supposed to be you know for certain appeared to, like Finn just about said. I enjoyed, you know, I, I killed your wife and I enjoyed doing, excuse me, I enjoyed doing so because I, excuse me, because I had to fight her before I could get to kill her. And when, when you see the two part in this, there is no way that that could, have, you know, based on what we see in this, when Finn tells him that, he should have said, you were nowhere near there. I didn't see you anywhere near there. And I did see her actually be, you know, killed. So, yeah. Nevertheless, you know, it, it appeared that Sarah died. So, you know, maybe... Chris 
Chris Hemsworth will yet again kiss a dead girl. Even if Kristen Stewart isn't in it. Even though it's not a Thor film. The the kind of in the first one, Eric is this kind of tragic, bitter, self-destructive, drunk, but thankfully not emo. You know. In in this, I mean, even before they bring back Sarah, he really isn't that much in that. It's yeah. And Again, Brad Jones and Snob, and his friends point out that Chris Hemsworth is generally a likable lead. And Freya basically had like one rule in her kingdom, or has rather, that you you can't love anyone. And Eric and Sarah broke that, and yeah, that's that's why some some bad stuff kind of happened, as per the yeah. And. You know, and this does very much use this idea of, you know, love will lead to tragedy. And, you know, it, the, the, yeah. And, and that is an element where Hans Christian Andersen, most definitely, you know, you talk about, like, you know, oh, must be turning in his, in his grave. In this case, if he is, it's to get more room to, to really give the film a big old thumbs up. Especially Freya. Generally, genuinely, he wrote in the, the Snow Queen that basically there are these... It's, it's a bit of a long story, but there's this element of tiny shards of a mirror that the mirror that only a mirror that only reflects the ugliness and this mirror was shattered so some of the shards of mirror were as small as grains of sand and were blown into the eyes of people and so they they hated the people that they usually loved because they could only see the ugly yeah that's Go ahead and if if you feel like just you know getting really really depressed about like romance and stuff, read up on Hans Christian Andersen's experiences with with romance. That's yeah. The I think Sarah may be the first real action heavy role for Jessica Chastain and of course it is just yet another strong female character for her and another strong female character for the film you know the in you know in these two films the the women never you know they don't sit around hoping for the best passively they go out and actually accomplish things and both films are very much women taking on other women and the and and the women are the ones who wield the power i have not seen jessica chastain in that much but i have liked her in each which includes this one the, there are definitely weaknesses to this film, but I don't think any of them lie on the shoulders of any of the actors. They all do rather well. And the 
yeah, basically Jessica Chastain, Lawless, Interstellar, and then this. And yeah, she she's amazing. And Spoonie points out about Ravenna that she kind of Al Pacino acts. She sh shouts very suddenly. And I'd add to that that she also does the, the John Malkovich thing of the the dissatisfied, as, as Nostalgia Chick puts it, the dissatisfied patron of the Olive Garden who enunciates everything to prove his point. Finn does that as well in the first one, both of those. Freya, not not much. She especially hardly ever really shouts. She's she's much less like she's she's somewhat commanding, but she's you know not yeah not not quite in that same way. And honestly, once Freya, once she has to contend with Ravenna, Emily Blunt, who I don't know from a lot else, you know, this and Edge of Tomorrow, I, I may have seen her. One or two other things, but that's pretty much it. She is great in this, but she does get a little lost the once Ravenna starts her yeah. Although she is much less OTT in this one. And you know, there there really aren't very many like shout, shouts of out or big proclamations. Freya doesn't even have a right-hand person to yell at. Or rather, she isn't seen with one too much. And I wondered, you know, who and how would kill Ravenna, given that in the first one it was very much this thing of, you know, by fairest blood. It was only Snow White who could kill her. It was a very specific spell that, you know, protected her from harm. And it's not really explained particularly in this why that's no longer the case, but yeah, it's it's really not a film that does well with you thinking about how the yeah how it connects to the first one and if the things that happened in the first one how they quite affect this one yeah. Now, in the first one, much like James Ushcroft, you James 1978, apparently does, Ravenna bathes in milk, which is not only Cleopatric, but possibly unsanitary. And, you know, the, the milk is then, like, you know, in, in the first one you see peasants, like, trying to drink it and, and use it to, you know, to showering and such, which, I mean, I know people who pay for that. N not me. I'd just be open to it. Nick Frost's N Nyon? I want to say Nyon. Returns, and he is still somewhat greedy and such and we do have a few more dwarves and they are new you know they're, they're all new actors and as such also 
new characters. You know, that Nick Frost was the the one mo considered most funny. You know, the, the rest of them really were like these, you know, incredible like character actors and such. And, you know, and then Nick Frost, the funny one. You know, so they brought him back. And, yeah, the, the new dwarves are, yet again, not little people, just, you know, they, they're, they're regular-sized actors who, you know, via effects, are made to look smaller. Although, this time, they're not quite as famous actors, so it's maybe less distracting. And in this, there are not seven, or rather, as you might note, in the first, there are eight. And then, you know, let's just say maybe there aren't eight by the end of the film. And I saw someone online just absolutely flip that there started out being eight. If they had actually shown flashbacks to how they said there used to be far more, dude would have an aneurysm. The, you know, the, the dwarves were very much the, you know, the, these unexpected steal the show kind of characters with these really memorable personalities and really distinct relationships between the different ones. You know, some of them were siblings, some of them were friends, fathers, sons, and they were these incredibly fun supporting characters. Yeah, I've already mentioned in this, it's very much just these very straightforward ones, but yeah, I... What can I say? I, I, I found them to be pretty endearing and the as, as I already mentioned the, William is in a little bit of this but not Snow White you know the wife the queen the previous protagonist it is possible that she went off screen to look for the real scepter instead of the branch that she was holding at the end of the first film. And I, I do think that, again, I commend the actors. You can really tell that this William is the king of the land. And like, yeah, you know, in, in just the very short you know, screen time he has in this. He's completely different from the William we see in the first film, in most of the first film. Now, the... There is still some, like, emotional and psychological depth to characters and such, and it is a in part, a, a modern, gritty take on this kind of, you know, a, a reimagining, or rather, the, the first was a reimagining of the Snow White tale. This one is not, it's, it's, it doesn't follow the, the Snow Queen, like, not all, all that much. Now, there isn't, there isn't quite something like the, the magic kiss in this one or a similar element, but it is very much, you know, people actually get hurt. It doesn't, you know, it's not just, Yeah, you, you can tell that they, you know, there there's a brief bit in this where, you know, someone actually has to tend to their wounds. And 
you know, the we're, we're in the first, it's very much Ravenna, you know, from a f feminist standpoint, you can see why she, why she is the way she is. She just goes about it in the wrong way. And that, that is what makes her evil, but not the, you know, not trying to get power in and of itself. And I've already somewhat mentioned, you know, in this, some characters who were complex in the first are kind of, you know, kind of just become the yeah, they're they're much more superficial in this. The first one was in three D. The this one is as well, but it didn't come here to Denmark in three D. The, the the 3D in the first is sometimes kind of showy. This one, some of the time, yeah. And there's a good amount of action. It can be quite tense and the there's some really great designs, sets, props, CGI. It's the the they they have a lot of detail and different different variations to Freya and her you know immediate yeah, you know, what, what she wears and how she uses, yeah. And not as much as the first, but it does still have some really striking images. And it's filmed fairly well, not, not as, you know, the, the first one is gorgeously filmed. And this one, it's pretty well and there's still some like kind of living nature kind of stuff but it's you know in the first it's it's tied very directly to the overall story and the the thematic and here it feels like it's there because it was in the first one. It doesn't it doesn't really affect anything. And we we never go to the LSD forest, which I really missed. Now the the overall film it's a little less dark. I, I expect it to be a lot less dark, but it does definitely try more for humor than emotion, and you know, thus it's easier to market or perceived to be easier to mark to market. And certainly this one is more crowd pleasing. There are elements that are you know, really supposed to get a crowd going where the first one more took risks and yeah. But there is still some blood and some violence and disturbing content and you know, characters will very clearly be in pain. And this, this also doesn't really have the really messed up imagery of the first word, you know, the, the 
dark forest would have like tar and rot and maggots. What creatures there are are quite well integrated and are not fought like the warrior within boss. And Eric might just need saving by, you know, a strong female character again. The Princess Mononoke Force Spirit does not return. And this one doesn't... Well, the first one is very much this kind of thing of the, the evil queen rules, turns nature bad. You know, in this... What you do have is that Freya spreads ice and, yeah, makes things colder. And th they did do more than I had thought from the trailers with her powers of, of ice. And where Ravenna was this, the, the evil ruler of one kingdom, Freya is taking many, although this does not feel as big in that regard. The, the use of slow-mo tends to be more effective in this than in the first. And this one doesn't really push the PG-13 rating the way the first does. The symbolism themes and use of color are still there, but a little more obvious and less, less interesting. And the score is quite good. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.